a stop, my dealer, yeah? You know, I, I thought it's a nightmare again, but I realized as I was driving back from Maseru, it was raining cats and dogs, as the British would say. Sure. And that rain was me, with me all the way for four and a half hours until I get to Gauteng. So when I got here and I saw the headlines, I just said, so I was driving in the same rain that was pounding Durban again and more disaster and more pain and more suffering. Man, I my heart goes out to our brothers and our sisters and our family in that area and we should do anything we can to alleviate that suffering and that pain. And so that's why today it's important for us to talk about pain and suffering for Christians in these end times. We've got to make right. sense of right. all of this madness that's happening around us. You see, that's why I go back to Jesus' strategic talk. I call it a strategic talk, which really has implications until the end of the ages, because the questions the disciples asked were responded to by Jesus in Matthew 24, and again in Luke 21, where yes. Jesus painted this picture of pain, of distress, of depression, and death that will prevail and become almost a norm. Right. That the loss of life and assets is no longer something people in the end of times will be afraid of. You know, Jesus even said in those days, Matthew 24 verse 7, you will live in very distressful events, nations mm -hmm. going to war against other nations, kingdoms rising against kingdoms, disasters right. by land, by sea, right. pestilences yes. and earthquakes, lives and assets being lost at just at that moment. In fact, right. he even intimated, let me also speak to those who believe that the climate agenda is not a biblical agenda. In fact, Luke 21, verse 25 and 26, because many of these disasters we are seeing, the flooding, many scientists are explaining them as climatic changes. Right. But it's nothing new because the Bible said it, because Jesus added and said, there will be environmental changes that would that will be triggered by climatic changes. Listen to the language. It's not a scientific text, but we can get what Jesus was saying. He says, and there will be signs in the heavens, meaning signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. These are things that determine the movements of the winds and seasons and changes in the rain patterns and the sunlight patterns. He also adds and says, as that's happening in the stars, there will be distress of nations with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. Verse 26 then says, and men's hearts shall yeah. fail them when they look at the ex with expectations on these things that are coming upon the earth. Why? Right, right. Because the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That looks yeah. like climatic disasters right there. It does. And unfortunately... Uh, if you read further down in Matthew 24, where Jesus gave that strategic talk about the future, he, he, he mentions these three words that say, many shall be offended mm. and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. So he says, many shall be offended, meaning they'll be upset, they'll be hurt, mm. they'll be wounded, mm -hmm. they'll be injured, mm -hmm. insulted, right. they'll be aggrieved and will actually be affronted by what's happening around them. And he says some will be betrayed. I listened uh, as we were bearing Usi Sutipora Fraser. Yeah. I don't know if you watched the video where Ike, yeah, a, bit, Ike, a, 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 bit, a bit of bits and pieces uh, yeah. of that. Just bits Man, and pieces here. Ike Kumala just stood up and rubbished the, 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 the government because he was, he felt Deborah was betrayed by the government. Where was the government sure. when she was suffering and having mm -hmm. going through all of this? And he was saying they must actually pay the children a lot of money. So people will feel betrayed, meaning mm -hmm. some of them will feel that they've been led astray and right, they've been right. deceived. They've been dealt with treachery. And, and then many people will betray one another by revealing things that were meant yeah. to be kept as secrets. And this violation of confidence and trust will build up into pain in people's lives. Right, right. 
and 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 in in the same vein, Jesus says they'll be offended, they'll be betrayed, they'll betray one another, and they'll hate one another. Hatred, mm. Mm. meaning an intense hostility or an aversion against someone. That's very right? strong. And and this mm. hatred will be systemic or systematic, and it will be expressed through structures of leadership and management and politics which is a crime and a bigotry against other human beings. And this also causes pain and suffering. Right. Now, let me quickly highlight to our listeners that simple pain and suffering from a medical point of view are not the same. Okay. Pain, according to the medical fraternity, is a natural uncomfortable feeling that tells you that something is not right in your body, in your mind. Right. And in your psyche. And this pain comes can be defined medically. Okay. There's, there's what we call nociceptic pain. Which is really a, yeah. a pain in your tissues. Because of injury. Right. So you get cut by the, by the knife. You feel nociceptic pain. But there's what also is called inflammatory pain. Which is an abnormal inflation that's caused by the body's uh, response to its immune system. Right. So you could have a, a, a headache. Okay, that tells you something is not right in you. There's also neuropathic pain. When a nerve is irritated because you've put pressure on it or it's damaged, you get neuropathic pain. Then you get mm. what you call functional pain. Okay, pain which is without any original cause. But it's just painful. You just feel pain somewhere. You don't know what the causes are. So medically... We can tell you what pain is and we can define it in, in different ways from a neuropathic uh, point of view or, or, or a medical point of view. But suffering is actually what happens after you experience pain. Right, right. So, so you, you feel this pain in you. The wound is gushing, is painful. For days, you're going to suffer because of that pain. You may not be able to do certain things. Yeah. And you may not be able to talk. You may not be able to walk. That's now suffering. Hmm. So Jesus then gives us this perspective in John 16 that says, Christians in the last time or in the end of times, in fact, in the book of Matthew 24, he says we shall be persecuted, we shall be hated, we shall be thrown into prison. Some of us shall be right, killed. Right. Then in chapter 16, verse 33, he gives us this meaning that says, these things that I'm telling you about yeah. pain, about suffering, about being hated, about being offended, I'm telling you so that you may have peace. Mm. Oh man, that's deep now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he says, I'm not going to take away the pain, but I'm going to give you peace in the pain. Yeah, it's like peace in the storm. Yeah. Exactly. It's so yeah. so peace is not the absence of suffering or pain. It right, is just right. the presence of this understanding that says God is in charge. This too shall pass. Yes, sir. Because he says in this world you will have not that you may, but you will have tribulation. But the, right. but be of good cheer. Be of, be peaceful because our master overcame. So as Christians we must understand that suffering is a consequence of human beings sinning against God. Right. And therefore, there must be a particular way of responding because the Bible is very clear that sin entered the world through one man. That's Romans chapter 5, verse 12. And death is passed to everyone because of sin. Right. And, right. and, and, and by the way, people, there are some pains... Some sufferings that are worse than dying. Mm. One of those from a psychology, I can tell you this from my psychological studies, that feelings of betrayal are more stronger and more painful than death. Ask me why. Why? The dead person or the person who has lost a dead one knows where their problem lies. If it was an abusive husband, they know where that person died and where he's laid. Hmm. They have some closure with that. But someone who's betrayed, 
that grave is still alive and that person is still living and can still betray them again. Right, right. So betrayal is more painful because your source of pain still is still living. And so, 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 unfortunately, we live in that broken world where there's so much dysfunction around us which causes a lot of suffering. We are forced to, to live in broken societies with broken mentalities and broken faculties Same. and that causes a lot sure. of pain because right. these scenes are done compulsively and repetitively mm -hmm. and suffering continues unabated from one generation to the other now unfortunately some of the suffering that people are, are now going through because of the pain of life cannot be explained how do you explain to a mother whose child, a girl child, gets murdered in cold blood? How do you comfort them? How do you comfort a man who's been trying to eke out a living in his business that just gets destroyed by a storm in Durban just like that? How do you explain a girl who's just gotten worded and, and the next day she's a widow? How do you explain to a man who has been faithful to his wife but gets betrayed? I mean, I mean, if a five-year-old child loses both parents on the same day from an automobile accident, or a father has to bury their 19-year-old son just when they get into university, some of these things, we cannot explain them. They remain a mystery. We will never fully understand them on this side of eternity. Right, right. We can, however, from a few verses I'm going to read here, give someone out there some word of comfort. And this is where now the five points come in. And I really want to take a bit of time here. I hope we've still got some time to share just right. briefly uh, five sure. points that I'm hoping that as we understand this, they will help us to understand what our suffering is doing for us or is doing through us to the glory of God. Right. We, we, we've got about five minutes for all those five points. Oh, that's so more than enough. Up. That's more than enough. Yeah, Let me just yeah. take one minute for each and then we move on. And I'm hoping sure. someone is listening out there. If you have a pen and paper, sure. just write this down. And point number one I want to say is that if you look at the story of Job, Job chapter 42 verse 5, Job endured so much suffering. Yeah. And at the end of his suffering, he says, My ears had heard of you, but my eyes have now seen you. What is that point saying? Suffering produces intimacy with God. Intimacy with God is often born in that fairness of affliction. There's an opening of the soul that happens during those times of stress and duress. During times of suffering, we experience God in a deeper and more profound way than when we are happy. Point number two. Paul writes about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. Point number two is that suffering equips us to comfort others. Hmm. Suffering gives us compassion for others who are hurting. It enables us to minister to them more effectively because we've been there. Sufferers want to be ministered to by people who are also experienced. People who suffer often want to have someone who knows how to handle this situation. And, and, and sometimes we become justifiably suspicious of people who appear to have lived lives of ease and they've never suffered our pain. And we look at them with disrespect because what can they tell us? They've never known what it means to suffer the way we do. But right. those who have suffered make the most effective comforters. In fact, I have a message that says God works with broken healers. Mm -hmm. People who've been broken before and have survived it know how to comfort others. And when you read the book of Corinthians, it says we are now able to comfort others through the comfort which God himself has comforted us with. Hmm. Point number three is that suffering is often a tool that refines us. If you read Isaiah chapter 48, 
verse 10. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10, it says, I have refined you. Hmm. Though not as silver, I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. Right. So, so, so the meaning of this verse makes it clear that pain and suffering have a way of bringing out strengths and weaknesses to the surface. Hmm. You never know how strong you are, Sipo, until you are through it. Yes, of course. And you're like, oh, man, I was so scared of this thing. I've come out of it. Sure. sure. I was afraid, but now I'm okay. So when the dross that flows to the surface, God takes it off and he purifies and refines us to be radiant Christians that are waiting for the second coming of Christ. So, so the points I've highlighted so far, suffering produces intimacy with God. Suffering equips us to comfort others. Suffering refines us and makes us better instruments in the hand of God. Point number four, suffering produces growth and maturity. Hmm. I was reading an experiment sometime that where scientists discovered that when trees grow up in a conservatory without the wind blowing on them, they develop very poor root systems. Right, right. So, so trees get more stronger to withstand weather elements when they grow up in an environment where there is wind and adversity. And, and, and James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into many temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. So patience is only produced when we are tried. You can't say you're a patient man, people, when you've never been made to, to go into a situation that tests you to see if you're patient. You can't say you're a patient person when, you're, when you can't wait for five minutes. You've got to have waited. All right. Mm. But verse mm. 4 says, But let patience have her perfect work, that mm. you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So if we turn to God during our time of pain, he can use our suffering to mature our faith. And this is, this, is, this is really clearly illustrated through the persecuted church. If you read the book of Revelation, the letters to the seven churches, if you look at the church that suffered the most in those seven churches that was persecuted, Jesus has no rebuke for it. Why? Because it was perfected by the suffering. Right. It is churches like Laodicea that are sitting easy and having it all pretty that are compromised. But churches that, and Christians that go through suffering, they tend to come up, trimmed up, fit, cleaner, sparkling, and much more resilient to stand for God. So suffering produces that growth and maturity. The last point, number five, is that suffering and pain conforms us to God's image. It sounds strange. But that's what Paul writes about in Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. It's a favorite scripture for many. Yeah. It says, for we know, again, a point of knowledge, for we know that all things, not some, but all, everything, meaning everything excluding nothing, the good, the bad, the ugly, the gross, you name it, all things work together for the good of them that believe in God. Right, right. To them who are called according to his purpose. That comes again, that word, purpose. Fit for purpose, called for a purpose. Do you know why God has called you? Because if you don't know your purpose, your pain will not make sense even to you. And then verse 29 says, To whom he did for no, he also did predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Right, right. So we may be tempted to read these verses and say that God will bring good out of everything. Mm. While he can and, and, and does redeem pain in our, in our lives, these verses actually speak to being conformed to God's image through our suffering. So that our suffering is the molding template God is using to create us. And so let's just remind ourselves again, why do we suffer and how do we see our pain? What is it doing for us? Number one, it produces intimacy with God. Draw yes. near to God during your pain. Number two, suffering equips us to comfort others. We become more sensitive to the pain of others because we went through it. Point number three, mm -hmm. suffering refines us. It cleans us. It prunes us. The, the fruit, that, the branch that bears more fruit, God trims it. He causes it to go through some pain. 
Because trimming is painful. Point number four, suffering produces growth and maturity. Without it, we will be weak Christians without roots that can withstand adversity. Finally, suffering conforms us into God's image. Mm. I hope someone mm. is listening mm. and this is making sense to them. And uh, I'm praying, people, that as we get this message to a close. Right. Jesus gave us this message in Luke chapter 21. I read Luke chapter 21 earlier on where Jesus refers to men's hearts failing them for fear of what's coming on the earth and uh, mm -hmm. all the pain that's happening, the, the heavenly powers being shaken and all those painful things that nations are going through. He adds this verse, Luke 21, 28, and says, when these things begin to happen, right, how are we supposed to respond to them? He says, look up and lift up your herds because your redemption draws nigh. Yes, sir. We're getting onto the tail end. If you ask any woman who's gone through childbirth, you'll tell you the, the pressure seems to come in slowly. So many compressions within a minute or five minutes. But as the, as the birth comes closer, those contractions get more intense and more frequent. Right. As we see the frequency of pain and suffering and loss happening all around us, it must tell us that our redemption has drawn near. I like that. And we must therefore look up. In fact, I've always said this, and I want someone to hear me clearly. When you are being delivered from Egypt, you will get yes, to the Red Sea, where in front of you, there's a barrier of shark-infested waters. On your left side, will be the desert. There's nothing there. On the other side, there will be mountains, difficult situations and obstacles. And behind you, there's an Egyptian army that's coming for your life. Mm. And circled by the sea, the desert, the mountains and the enemy army, where else can you look? Where else can you look? Look up. Mm. Look up. Look to God. He is ready to hear you cry. I don't care you don't believe when you don't go to any church. This is your heritage as a child created by God. You too Amen. can today look up because your redemption has drawn nigh. And so I want to thank God that in these last days, our pain is never going to be removed. In fact, it's going to get worse. Mm. It's going to get even more intense and many shall pull back because they will not understand what has hit them. But I want someone wow. out there to say, Lord, strengthen my faith that I may be able to stand after I'm tested. Yes, because sir. your faith, the test of your faith is more important than gold tried in fire. Hmm. And God, hmm. sometimes God stands as the refiner on your fairness of suffering, and you will never take that pain away, that suffering away, until it has done its full work in refining your character. And that's why I hope, Sipo, mm. in the next episode, we'll talk about how to see God through your pain and suffering. Amen. I, I'm no, hoping I God will, I hope God will give us time to talk about that, because God gets lost for many people when pain and suffering comes in. Mm. But actually, that's the time we should be standing up for him. So how do we see God through our pain and our suffering? I hope I'll get time to teach on that in the next one. But I think we we'll need to do. get to pray. We'll we, no, we we need, need to, to pray now. To yeah. pray with somebody. Yes. I'm sure there are numbers that you want to give your viewers and our listeners that they can get in right. touch with yes. us if they want more that's information true. on this. Right. If family have just joined us and you wish to get in touch with uh, us and, of course, uh, receive more of these messages, uh, uh, you're most welcome uh, to just uh, text us or even send a voice note on our WhatsApp number, plus two seven seven three four seven zero three five two zero. That number again is plus two seven seven three four seven zero three five two zero. We'll gladly um, what uh, accept uh, uh, you interacting with us. Uh, truly appreciate it. Mm. My, my leader, uh, mm. you're most welcome to just lead us in prayer. Amen. I just want to pray with someone out there who says, 
Nobody knows the pain and the suffering I'm going through. I don't know what you have suffered justifiably or unjustifiably. But today I want to tell you, God is in charge of your life. Nothing just happens. Your pain, your private, personal suffering is God's opportunity to give you his noblest gifts. And your dreams will be born in seasons of pain. I want to pray with you right now. You don't understand what your pain is doing for you, but I want you to know that it is changing you into the similitude of God. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you this afternoon. I thank you at this moment for our listeners who have taken time to listen to this message and are seeking for meaning out of their pain and their sufferings and their losses. Mm. I thank you, Father, that you are still God and you are in charge. Nothing just happened to us. Mm. You allowed the arrows, you allowed the pain for your glory. Mm. If you could allow it on Job and you spared his life, may you allow it even in our lives that when some shall see us standing in the furnace where we should be consumed, they will see you standing with us. May our pain be an opportunity for the world to discover who you are. Mm. May the fire that we are going through Not consume us, but burn out anything that does not represent who you are. Father, at this moment, I pray for peace, not in the absence of pain and suffering, but peace in the suffering, peace Mm -hmm. in the storm, peace even in the moments of pain. May your name be glorified because you will give us peace, knowing that you are a God who is in charge a God who loves us and you will never allow us to be tempted and tried and suffer beyond what we can carry. Help Mm -hmm. us, therefore, to walk with dignity, to stand up tall and smile even in our pain, knowing that you are with us. Give us abundantly of your spirit. Pour him upon our hearts and cause us to be filled And to walk in the newness of life. Thank you, my Father, even for this platform that you have set for the teaching of many. Bless our visitors. Bless our our, our listeners. Bless those who will watch even after this broadcast is done. May the same power that you gave us at this moment be available for them. Bless AWRISID Media. That many may be blessed and may meet you and their faith strengthened. And their lives transformed. And new lives born again. For we pray and ask all this. In the name of our Lord and our Savior. Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Uh, Minister Melusi, thank you so much for making time to just connect with us. Amen. And shedding such a powerful and very um, important lesson for us to grasp as God's children. Amen. We truly appreciate your indulgence. Until next time, stay lifted. Yes. Amen. Thank you so much, my brother, and uh, greetings to our viewers and all the best to you all. Thank you so, so much indeed. Amen.